Good morning and welcome to Medina First United Methodist Church. So glad that everyone is here this morning. And if you can't be with us in person, thank you for joining us online. It's great that we can worship not only in the house of the Lord, but as a family of Christ, that we come together at this moment in this time. No matter where we are, we know that as, we, as long as we are worshiping together, the Lord is there with us also. We're just so grateful that you've taken the time to join us today. But as we continue to worship this morning, let us begin today with our affirmation of faith which you'll find located on the screen. This is the Apostles' Creed. So as you are able, let us stand and unite our voices in this historic confession of the one true Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we are just so grateful to be in your house this morning. Lord, we just continue to ask that you... Uh, use us as your instruments of peace, use us to be the beacon of this community, use us as you have desired. Lord, we know that we, as we hear this morning that you will melt us and mold us and shape us into the people and the community that we need to be for you and your service. So let us be rejuvenated in your spirit through word, prayer, and scripture and sermon, that we may join our voices together and unite our lives in you. For it is your name that we pray, amen. You may be seated. And as we continue to worship this morning, our opening song is a new one for us. It's called Sing Wherever I Go. Oh, my life, all I know, God been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. All, all my life, all I know, God's been good. My soul, mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. God is for me, he's not against me, I will hold to the plans he has for me. When I'm broken, he will fix me, I will call. God and sing wherever we go, no matter how high or how low. Our next song this morning is Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Tis 
Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that He is with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. As always, I appreciate the work of our music ministers as they continue to be with us for two services every Sunday. Traditionally, in the past, we have a contemporary service in the early morning, and then uh, later in the day for our second service, we have a traditional service. So they're doing a good job of trying to blend that for us, and I appreciate that. And we have stylized the services to be much shorter than we normally would uh, allow them to be. Well, we try that if I don't preach too long, right? It's okay to nod your head and say amen. It's all right. Uh, just in the interest of safety, we try to keep them just a little bit shorter. As you'll notice, there's no offering within our services. Uh, but if you'd like to leave your donation at any of the receptacles we have, the offering place at the doors, we'd appreciate that as we continue to do ministry within our community. And Sunday School has started back. If you haven't joined us for that, it's been going well the last two weeks. So we're grateful that is back in action. And uh, it's just been good to kind of get a little more normal feel the things around us. So seeing some friendly faces that I haven't seen in a while, it's good to see you here as well. This morning, as we turn our attention to our prayer concerns, um, we have several that we continue to pray for every week. Uh, one of those being Brooke, um, as she recovers from, from breast cancer and she's doing well. Also, Jake White, as he recovers from having his jaw broken and uh, on a liquid diet for quite a while. Good to see you, Jake, this morning. Continue to pray for you, buddy. 
Also, we want to continue to remember Catherine Burns and Don and Glenda Langford. Uh, Glenda's a cousin to Belinda Burns. Don and Glenda both have cancer, recovering from that. Remember them in our prayers. Also, Charles Taylor, who is uh, Belinda's brother. He's in poor health. And Bob and Carl Sokol, which is Miss Jean's uh, brothers. Bob has cancer, uh, if I remember that right. And Mr. Carl has his mouth cancer, throat cancer, I think. And uh, Carl is in danger out west from the fires that are raging. So remember them. And also Mr. Robert Morris's sister. A friend of ours rejoined our community this week, Ken Sifford. Uh, he kind of fallen on some hard times and has transitioned back to our community and asked for prayer for him. He's got a new job, and we're uh, good, glad to report that. And things are going well for him. He can't join us right now. He's working seven days a week. Uh, but he's grateful for that, and we're grateful that one day soon he'll be able to join us. Also remember the Wendell Allen family. Mr. Wendell was a longtime bus driver in this community and a community member. Also, uh, in the distant family of my wife. So remember him. He passed away from cancer just a couple of days ago. His services will be today. Mr. Bobby Bryan, our normal guitarist uh, father who has uh, battling against cancer and dementia. Remember him. Miss Carlin Hurst, who is Stephanie Wolf's mother, who's had surgery. And Frank Dotson is new to our prayer list. Mr. Frank um, is Jennifer Rowland's father. And he's suffering from some, some uh, uh, severe problems. He's been in the hospital. So we we'll remember Mr. Frank in our prayers. He is back home. But uh, Jennifer asks we add him to our prayer list. And also Danny Odom, who's a community member who had open heart surgery a couple of weeks ago. And Miss Natalie Kraft, um, our church administrative assistant's mother. She fell this week, uh, I think broke or bruised a couple of her ribs. And it's pretty banged up. So she's not able to be here with us today. So let's remember Miss Natalie in our prayers. If you'll join me now for our morning prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer, prayed in unison. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity, Lord, to be in your house, to be together amongst like-minded and like-hearted believers. And Lord, we do so coming before you, confessing that from first to last, Lord, we're sinners. We're in need of your grace. We're in need of your mercy. And Lord, we humbly come before you confessing our brokenness to you. And Father, we come with contrite hearts, Lord, knowing, Lord, that our need for you is sufficient. But in our contrition, Lord, we know indeed that your joy is amongst us, for we indeed are truly forgiven through your Son, Jesus Christ. So in our times of need, we know that you are making us whole. Our times of sin, Lord, we know that you are giving us the opportunity to realize what it is to be like without you. And so, Father, as we gather today, in both joy, Lord, and in sorrow for our sins, we celebrate your Son, Jesus, who makes all things new. And we pray that newness would, would be spread upon our hearts and in our lives, that you would continue to transform us and make us like your Son. Help us to love, Lord, when we feel unloved. Help us to forgive when we would turn to hate and violence. Lord, help us, Lord, to be as your son. Help us to be a vessel of resurrection for the world around us. This morning, Father, we remember all those on our prayer list and many others which we often lift up within our thoughts. We pray that you would nurture and heal them. We pray, Lord, for those who give care to us in our times of woundedness. We pray for our doctors, our nurses, our paramedics, our EMTs, our police officers, our firefighters, we pray for your safety and protection and peace to be upon them. And Father, we pray for those who nurture our children. Lord, for our school teachers, our school administrators. Lord, for our Sunday school teachers. For all those who invest their lives to help our students. Lord, navigate this world with truth and knowledge. And Father, we, we ask especially that you bless our students as they are back in school. Lord, help them, Lord, to be safe. Help them to know your healing, to know your nurturing strength and blessing. 
And Father, we, we ask that you would bless this nation as we see trials and tribulations around us, as we feel the pain and woundedness of those within our society. Lord, as we, we seek peace and seek truth in a world so confused by polarity, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be one as you are one, as your son Jesus asked us to be. Lord, we pray for peace during this election cycle. We pray for peace in our nation and every nation of the world. We pray that we may be given a leader that would help us to continue to be a nation under you. Bless our president. Bless our, bless our Congress, the leaders of every state and local government, the leaders of our denomination, the leaders of every church, and every church that gathers today in your name. Lord, no matter denomination, we pray that you'd bless them with your peace, your strength, and your favor. And Father, we pray for those who do not know you, those who have yet to experience and receive your grace. May we indeed be a testimony to them of the goodness, Lord, that you have for us. Father, we ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning our scripture lesson comes from Psalm 78. You may remember that uh, if you paid attention during our songs, I had a parable up during our time when we normally would be singing. And yes, let me say it again, how much I miss singing in church. But it was a parable from Matthew 20 concerning the laborers and the vineyard. And I'll refer to that uh, this week in the sermon, but only briefly. And then we'll study that more in the weeks to come. So let's begin today with our reading from Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. And I want to invite you to stand. I, I know you want some exercise, right? Everybody's excited about that. Psalm 78, please stand as you're able as we read from the psalmist, beginning in verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and His might and the wonders that He has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Thus endeth the reading the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the light and reveal. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the wind and cleanse. Convict, convert, consecrate until we are wholly thine. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This morning, I want us to think about vessels of faith. And for the last five weeks previous to this, if you've been keeping up online or been able to visit with us, We've really followed the story of Joseph and culminated that sermon series around Joseph and what it means to grasp God, to hold on to God like Joseph's father Jacob did. But we culminated that series with the idea that the difference that Joseph had in his life is that he chose to be a vessel for goodness in a time of evil. No matter what happened to him, he saw God's divine hand. He might not have enjoyed it, but he wanted to be someone who carried God's goodness to those around him, and he did. So this morning I want us to continue in a similar theme, vessels of faith, vessels of faith. 
So uh, know that we all love to have something interactive, right, in our life. And some of you joining us online will now get an opportunity to know what it feels like to be an online student. And so we're going to give everybody a pop quiz this morning. Uh, I got to do that for two weeks during quarantine, during um, schoolage, well, two weeks for me when I became a teacher. I'm not equipped to be a teacher, by the way. So we're going to have a pop quiz. And our friend Tim over here, I think, if he'll keep time for us, for a minute and 30 seconds, we are going to try to figure out what the Ten Commandments are. Now, you think that's easy. Now, I'm going to say we do have a visitor here who's a minister, so you're going to be better off, we hope, than the first service, okay? The first service who, uh, they got them, but it took them about the whole time, didn't it? So, and I'm going to give you, um, and we got Mr. Robert here who's a, who's a linguist, so we'll, he'll help us out here. But we're going to try to get the Ten Commandments. Tim is going to give us a minute and a half. And I'm going to give you a cheat sheet because I needed a cheat sheet when I was teaching, teaching online, okay? So here we go. There they are. There are the Ten Commandments. If you can read those, that I, suppose to, I think that's supposed to be Hebrew, though I'm not sure what that is on there. I'm not a linguist. So Tim, you give us the signal, and I want you to name out the Ten Commandments for me. Let's go. Okay, there's one. There we go, okay. What else? Remember the Sabbath day? Do not covet. I think we've got one more. I think we're at nine, really. Bear, bear false witness. So let me see if I can rehash them. You ready? All right. How much time we got, Tim? 50 seconds. Let's see if, let's see if we, we, we heard these said, all right? Uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me, no graven image shall not misuse the Lord God's name. Do not take the, the name in vain, right? So what's that? That's three, correct? Do not kill, do not steal, do not covet, do not, do not commit adultery. Honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor thy father and mother. We missed one. What was the number nine? Come on. Did I not say lie? Did I, not, I might not have said lie. So that's ten. That's pretty close, right? It's harder to do than you think, right? Pop quizzes were never a fan. I was never a fan of. Uh, but they generally run, when you think about them, they generally run with those things that we should not do before God, to God himself, things that we should not do to our neighbor, and things that we should do, right? That's kind of the, the general flow of the Ten Commandments. So I think we got all of them. If not, you can look. I think it's Exodus 20. I think that's the passage. I didn't put it in here. Uh, for brevity, since I tend to be long-winded and uh, short on hair, which I don't know if that's because I am long-winded. Do you think that causes hair loss? Maybe. I've done this several times in different congregations during Sunday school classes and 21 years of ministry, and I find it's always difficult for us to really remember accurately what the Ten Commandments are. I think we know them, but when you're put on the spot, it, it does add pressure. I never like time tests. Anybody here like time tests? No, me either. But I have found over 21 years in ministry that the one most often missed, but y'all got it, and so did the first service, so I'm proud of you guys, is honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. That is, is the one that seems to, to, to truly be the one that people struggle with the most. Now, it's strange to me, very strange to me, that when we think about God telling us what the foundational truths of all society should be, and let me pause for a moment and, and enlighten you what C.S. Lewis had said and some of the great thinkers of the world have said, we often think that the morality that God gave to the Israelites was completely unique, and in some ways it was completely unique, but many of the other societies in the world, many other societies in the world value the things that are held to be true from God's revealed truths in the Ten Commandments. Now, C.S. Lewis didn't take that to mean that, that it was a, a lessening of what God had said. God was refining it in the Israelites. What he said was that the entire nature knows. The world has been revealed through the cosmos, as, the, as Paul says in the book of Romans, what is true. It's called natural law. Natural law. So natural law imitates God's revealed law. Honor thy father and thy mother, though, is often forgotten. Why do you think that is? 
Why do you think in our culture, which it is true, that you will often hear in secular media the idea of the prodigal? Here comes the prodigal returning. It is commonly known, the story of the prodigal. Why did Jesus use it? Why did Moses even teach us that we should honor our father and our mother? Well, I think it's because we as humans have a predisposition not to want to do what the generations before us want to do. We want to be original. We want to be new. I mean, and our, and our youngest generation, think about it. What are we on, iPhone 12 now? Something like that, 11 or 12? I mean, every year we want something new and better, right? But honor thy father and thy mother, which God gave the eternal weight of. Now think about it. Think about it. God gave the eternal weight of honor thy father and thy mother the same weight as if you commit murder or adultery or theft. Things, some of those things which we can be incarcerated for in our society, he gave the same eternal weight to honor thy father and thy mother and honor the Sabbath. It's a different story. But honor thy father and thy mother. Fascinating to me. We know that it's as old as creation to want to forge our own path and to be skeptical of the things that we're told. Never more true than now. Never more true than now. In fact, we expect it. As parents, we expect our, children's to, our children to eventually rebel. And if we were honest as kids, we once were all kids who were here, right? Some of us became real prodigals. We went far down that path. And if we didn't go far down that path, we at least crossed it a time or two to see if it looked pretty good, right? It's true. It's just life. All of us are fallen. We turn to Psalm 78. The psalmist says, Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Now we read seven verses of this, and if you read the whole many, many verses, I think it's well over 40 verses. How many is it, Jennifer? You got your Bible up. How many verses is Psalm 78? 72. I decided not to read all of them, okay? When we read this passage of Scripture, you can read that entire passage, 72 verses, which tells you how good my memory is. I did read it all for the sermon, but I only decided to use seven. If you read that from first to last, there's no parable there. I mean, we're familiar with parables, aren't we? Jesus told parables. I had one embedded in our worship slides, the parable of the vineyard. And usually it's in response to a question. Not always. Well, Jesus... Um, who is my neighbor? Well, there was a man going down the road. Samaritan, right? Remember that? And sometimes he tells parables to get people to ask a question. In fact, the disciples ask him at one point, they ask Jesus, why do you speak in parables? And he says, so that you will be ever seeing but never perceiving, ever hearing but never understanding, which seems strange. Doesn't Jesus want us to understand? Of course he does. But to understand the gospel, you've got to be invested in it. You've got to ask the right questions. You've got to want to know. Yeah, this isn't a pop quiz where he gives you the answers. He wants you to be involved in the process. He wants you to be transformed and to be changed. That being said, in this passage of Scripture, there is no parable. He says, I'll speak to you in a parable. So we've got to figure out from this passage of Scripture, and it's pretty simple, where's the question? Parables usually answer questions or cause us to ask a question. What's the question? This very important parable teaches us from this passage in Psalm 78. Didn't say this in the first service, but I think Psalm 78 is one of the most important psalms for all the world. Why? Why is it? Well, like all the parables of Jesus, it teaches us the most important truths about God and life. Remember verse 4? 
We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and His might and the wonders that He has done. The question that this psalm seeks to answer, the parable it seeks to answer is, how do we grow generations of faith? And we need to be asking this question right now in our society desperately. Billions of dollars are spent within our culture by media to contradict what is common and simply taught through Holy Scripture and the 2,000 years of church tradition. And God forgive us, the church has been overly influenced by that in our past. How do we grow generations of faith? If you don't realize it, the children that are sitting in the pews around you, your children, your neighbors, we're at risk. There's a great battle going on for our lives. I'm a conspiracist when it comes to this. The world does not want us to understand, to love, and to know Jesus Christ. Period. There's a conspiracy going on. And it's not led by a political administration. Some may help or hinder. It's led by someone much more powerful than that. And his name is Satan. And it's always been. Our kids and we, but especially our kids, are fought for ground. Period. End of story. So we need to be asking the question, how do we grow generations of faith? And you're blessed in this church to have some professional staff. Don't know that you're blessed to have me as a professional staff member, but we are blessed to have professional staff, right? You've got a, a youth minister who's in training who does an outstanding job and truly cares about your young people. You've got very skilled Sunday school teachers who study the Word and hey, I want to tell you this. I learned this long ago when I started in ministry. When I come into church, I do not think. When I come to a new church, I never think I know the most about the Bible there. Why? Because I usually find a little old lady in the church who's been reading the Bible longer than I've been alive. Trust me, she knows more about it than I do if she's never been to seminary. I do not care. They know it better. You learn more about the Bible by reading it than you will by studying anything somebody else tells you to think about it. That needs to be an amen there. Come on, Mr. Robert, give me an amen. It's the truth. How do we build generations of faith? Well, it's not by professional staff members. It's not by sending your kids to camp. Camp can be helpful if camp is teaching the right thing. It's not by having a great praise team. That helps, Right? My son bounces all the way to church on Sunday morning because he can't wait to hear it. It's good. It's good to have something beyond to draw us in. Nothing wrong with that. It's not about having a preacher with a PhD or a doctorate or even a D-man or an MDiv. Some of the most effect effective ministers in the world around us don't even have college educations, but they have faith. They have faith in God. So what is the pivotal way in which we grow a generation of faith behind us. I want you to look around you. If you're watching online, somebody's with you. If not, look in the mirror. Look around you. You are. That's why the Scriptures say to honor thy father and thy mother. In the ancient world, you remember there was no Facebook, there was no Google search. There were no really research done at all. We had Holy Scripture, which in that time was held by a very confined few. Truth was basically held within divine Scripture, which was very scarce, and people's understanding of it, which was told and transmitted through the most important thing the church needs to work on, and that is relationship with one another. If we want to grow our children up in faith, we need to teach them the story. Honor thy father and thy mother, we think is telling our children something, but it's also telling us something, isn't it? It's telling us that we've got to be responsible to give our children a faith-based lesson in life that is our relationship with them. It has to be done. It must be done. A 
former church member of mine was a young man. His son was baptized as an infant, and I began to talk to him about the, some of the things he needed to do to help raise his children in the faith. He asked. And I began to describe some of the things that he could do. And he asked me one of the strangest questions in my life. He said, shouldn't I let my son make his own decisions? Well, of course, your son's going to make your own, his own decisions whether you want him to or not. But the truth is, faith is transmitted through people. They learn it from who we are and what we do. We've got to have both of those things, what we do and who we are, or it won't work. How many of you online or here in, in, in this space, how many of you can name a person who was not a minister, who invested something in your life that made you think, I want to have faith like that person. Can you name a person? Just raise your hand. Can, can, can you say that? It might have been somebody in church. It might have been a co-worker. It could have been a college roommate. Who knows? But you see, our faith is cultivated best by the relationships around us. We're supposed to share it that way. I've often wondered why Jesus didn't come uh, to fruition now, why wasn't he incarnate in the flesh? Why, was, what the, why did not the Son of God come now? I mean, think about how he could have been seen. Think about if he'd done one miracle. How it could have been known. Well, I think why he didn't wait till now is because in the ancient world, they so valued relationships, the key component of transmitting the faith that God chose then. When people were taught, obviously not perfectly, but taught to trust and love and invest in each other. You see, something strange has happened. We don't even know it. 75 years ago, a father or a mother would have taught their child basic skills of life. And much of that life might have followed in the same way of life. I have an uncle whom I uh, admire greatly who is a carpenter, a brick mason, an electrician, a mechanic. He can plow, he can till, he can butcher, he can hunt, he can fish. Dude, when the apocalypse happens, he's fine. You know where he learned all those skills from? My grandfather. You know where my grandfather learned those skills from? His father. And my great-grandfather learned it from what? His father. We don't realize that it's become so normal to us that we think that education and discipleship should be done by somebody else. No, it should be done on us. People used to understand that, that we had to give life skills to the next generation. Now we send our kids to high school, to college, and hope they'll get the, the best education they can. The best education in faith comes from us, from you loving and caring for those around you and investing in it, sowing seeds that will bear fruit in the future. If we want to know how to fill this church and change this world, all we got to do is begin to sow relationships of faith. That's all it takes. I did campus ministry for 12 years. The musicians want to come on forward. I did campus ministry for 12 years. I started out with six kids. You had to have 10 to get a charter. So we got some staff members to sign up, okay? So I could have a charter at what used to be Lambeth's campus. Within three years, two and a half, I went from having six people on the roll to having 80 on a campus ministry roll. Did it for 12 years. You know what I found that kids wanted the most and the thing that went, made it go from six to 80? You know what I found that they wanted the most? It was something very simple. They wanted somebody to know their name and to be interested in them. A lot of those kids didn't agree with me. I'm a Bible-believing minister. They'd been trained, oh, let's be skeptical. But you know, many of them came to a biblical faith because they trusted me, because I loved them. It's that simple. Let's fill this place. Even in COVID-19, let's fill it. Let's fill this community with people of faith and let's do it by sowing relationships of faith. I'll leave you with a challenge instead of an invitation today. It's time for us as the church 
to be people of relationship. Not just knowledge, not just heart, but open arms. And people will be transformed. Let's get busy. If you haven't figured it out, the world around us is dying to know Jesus Christ. And they're going to know Him best through us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. without hope and no place to begin love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began ash was redeemed only morning grew quiet and my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes over me you have made me chains I'm a prisoner no more my shame was a ransom he faithfully bore he canceled my debt and he called me his friend when death was arrested in my rejoiced as though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand that's when death was arrested and my life began that's when death was arrested and my life began Washes over.
few quick announcements. September the 22nd, Tuesday night, 6.30, lay leadership team will be meeting in the sanctuary as we begin our planning for nominations for new year, uh, for this new coming, this upcoming year. Can you believe it? It'll be 2021 before long. Aren't we excited to some degree? <laughs> anyway, we hope for better days. Um, Wednesday at 6 p.m., Rooted, our youth ministry, will be meeting in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, Brett will be there and uh, look forward to that for our young people. And the 24th, our SPRC will meet um, in the Fellowship Hall as well at 530 to do our regular maintenance uh, for the year. Uh, just staff discussions, all those normal things. So if you're part of Pastor Parish Relations, uh, please join us this coming Thursday at 530. Also, we'll be having con uh, confirmation services will be held on September the 30th on a Wednesday evening. It will be a limited attendance only, limited only to, to family members and their mentors and confirmation. So we will, we will live stream that. At, uh, we'll probably do that around 7 o'clock. We'll live stream that around 7 o'clock um, next well, Wednesday week, as it said here in the South, for our confirmands. Then right after that, we'll kick up with our new confirmation class as all that schedule got changed by COVID-19. Today, as you leave this place, I hope you will remember, see what the song said? We're free, free, right, we're free. A lot of the world doesn't know what it means to be free in God. To know they're, they're not going to be held to a standard by a God who doesn't love them. They're going to be held by a standard to a God who wants to love them and does love them and wants to know Him. You know something the rest of the world does not know. Share that love of God with the world. The world needs us. The world need God, needs God. May you go forth in peace and may you know His presence in your life and may that pre presence motivate you to be filled with compassion with healing and with joy so the world may see the generations may continue to know the glory of the God who loves them through Jesus Christ go in peace and return in health amen oh, we're free.